Although many of the symptoms are similar between coronaviruses and influenza, the same vaccines and treatments used to prevent and treat flu are not effective against the coronavirus. Many who don't typically contract the seasonal influenza may feel the same lack of threat from COVID-19, but they are not the same. Human coronaviruses were first identified in the mid-1960s. They are closely monitored by public health officials. In humans, the viruses can cause mild respiratory infections like the common cold, but can also lead to more serious illnesses such as pneumonia. Coronaviruses are a large group of viruses that cause diseases in both animals and humans. They often circulate among camels, cats, and bats, and can sometimes evolve and infect people. In animals, these viruses can cause diarrhea in cows and pigs and upper respiratory infections in chickens. In humans, the viruses can cause mild respiratory infections like the common cold, as I mentioned, but can in some cases, such as the current pandemic, cause serious disease and complications in certain individuals. There are seven coronaviruses that infect people. The four main subgroupings of coronaviruses are known as alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. The common human coronaviruses, usually causing that mild to moderate upper respiratory infection uh, and illnesses like the common cold, but most people get infected with one or more of these viruses at some point in their lives. This information applies to the common human coronaviruses and should not be confused with the current pandemic. Sometimes coronaviruses that infect animals can evolve and make people sick and becomes a new human coronavirus or a novel virus. Three recent examples are the 2019 uh, COVID or our current pandemic, but also our SARS-CoV and the MERS-CoV. These viruses that initially started in animals evolved into pandemics, causing a variety of different illnesses. In dealing with a pandemic, obviously we need to have effective treatments for those already infected. We need to identify those protective measures that will continue to, protect, to prevent the spread of the virus. One of the most effective preventive measures that we have is vaccines. So who is at risk for severe disease from COVID-19? In looking at the, the populations most impacted by the disease, we've seen that older adults, in particular males and smokers of both genders, Persons who have underlying chronic medical conditions such as heart disease, diabetes, lung disease, high blood pressure, and cancers. Individuals of color have also been disproportionately impacted. This is not to say that all ages haven't been affected. It is just to say that some groups have been more disproportionately impacted than others. It is harder to determine actual numbers of individuals currently and previously infected due to the number of individuals who have been asymptomatic uh, with this disease. Therefore, our reported illnesses have ranged from mild symptoms to more severe illnesses. In addition to ongoing research on vaccine development, there have been ongoing research projects into the identification of effective treatments for this disease. The, this research continues and includes things such as antiviral drugs, dexamethasone, which should not be used in individuals with less severe symptoms, the use of anti-inflammatory therapies. Researchers have studied many anti-inflammatory drugs to treat and prevent the dysfunction of several organs and lung injuries that, re that result from the infection uh, associated inflammations. Also immune-based therapies. Researchers are studying um, the use of these types of uh, medications and the authorization of convalescent uh, plasma therapy used under the emergency use authorization has also occurred. Ongoing treatments and research go are ongoing to develop drugs to prevent COVID-19. And we're also looking for, at those drugs that will help to prevent the disease before and after exposure to the virus. Until there is an effective vaccine, individuals will need to continue to be vigilant and use preventive measures. One of the greatest concerns is the possibility of what is called a twindemic. And this is a, this is a term used to describe the risk of co-circulating flu and COVID. It will be very important to recommend the flu vaccine this year. 
While we are still waiting for a safe and effective vaccine for COVID, we already have a safe and effective, effective vaccine for seasonal influenza. But other considerations, individuals could be susceptible to contracting both diseases at the same time, placing them at increased risk of the morbidity and mortality from both of these diseases. In addition, strain on healthcare systems and resources needed to combat the COVID uh, virus could also occur. Many states and communities have ordered extra doses of seasonal influenza the vaccine this year. There are more doses available to protect individuals uh, from the flu. So can we use vaccine delivery methods that would reduce the potential spread and guide and enhance social distancing, such as using drive-through clinics or other strategies that would reduce congregate settings. Mm -hmm.